All right, pain free today, we ought to talk about a number of things. The big thing that I want to talk about, the goal of today's conversation is to let you... I need oxygen to live. <laughs> mm. I think. Hey, I like we, my oxygen mask. Well, I like oxygen. I'm not wild about the mask, but I like mm. oxygen a lot. <laughs> oxygen, I gotta have oxygen. <laughs> we all have to have oxygen. Tell me about it, Doc. Oh, well, take, it, take it off my face so I can talk to you. Well, the strange thing is that there are so many scientists today and gentle, people in medicine who say that oxygen is the very thing that's killing us. Fix my glasses, Doc. Can you believe that? I'm going to try. Let's there see. You. I'm not very really good at that. We'll get, oh, there we go. Oh, now, I can see better now. Now you. you're cool. Am I putting my, I'm going to yeah. get under your arm, Doc. Now, now, now That's you, easier now. now. <laughs> you like me, don't you, Doc? Be, watch your hands. You're a cool dude. Watch your hands. <laughs> go ahead. Well, Oxygen. Yep. Yeah, well, the thing that we want to talk about, too, though, is about the problem that there is today with these antioxidants, things that go against oxygen. Can you believe that people want you to take things that go against oxygen? Got to have oxygen. Well, but they say that the products of it, of oxygen, once you breathe it in in your body, that these things will kill you. What do you think about that? I think hold your breath about three minutes and see if you want oxygen. <laughs> That's a very good point. And when you go into the emergency room, the doctor calls not for give me some vitamin E or give me some beta carotene. They say, give me some oxygen stat right now. O-X-Y-G-E-N, oxygen, got to have it. There you go, my friend. Well, you know, recently in my studies, and I've studied this area pretty seriously, what I have found is that there are hundreds of studies that show that these antioxidants can not only be ineffective, but that they can hurt you. What do you think of that? I saw that on TV, antioxidants. Every time you turn TV on, antioxidants. That's right. I don't right. know what they're talking about. Well, they, they, they forget to tell you about the possibility or the potential of harm, don't they? Yeah, and I don't like harm. I like to feel good. Well, somebody needs to inform the people about the potential dangers of these antioxidants, and that's going to be me. That's my job. Tell them, Doc. I think I know a little bit, but I think every bit I've learned is from you. Well, the problem started with this... There's a, there's a bill, an act that was introduced in Congress in 1994. And this thing made it such that none of these supplements, these dietary supplements, are tested by the government to see if they work or if they're safe. None of them. How about that? I bet that shocks you, huh? Well, somebody getting something somewhere for all this money they're making. It is now a $27 billion industry, the dietary supplement market. I could retire on that. Well, and, and that's why it's so difficult to get the truth out there to people about the dangers of these antioxidants. They can increase the risk of even breast cancer, lung cancer, prostate cancer, strokes, heart disease, on down the line. That's because it's unnatural stuff you're putting in your mouth. Well, now, that's an excellent point, pain-free, because the best way of always to get vitamins is in your foods with fresh fruits and vegetables. And they think that maybe it's a synergism of all of the compounds. That's a big word, I know. But it's synergism. It, yeah, it's all these compounds are working together to help you when it's in its natural state. When you isolate them in the chemistry lab and try to resynthesize them and put them in a pill, they just don't seem to work anymore. They take the active ingredient out of the plant and condense it and give it to you in its unnatural state. That's right. And in fact, the side effects or the increased risk of all these antioxidants today is to a point that I believe it's a global health problem and it's a problem that I think is going to ultimately have some legal liability to those people, those drug companies, those pharmaceutical companies, those manufacturers of all of these antioxidants, including antioxidant vitamins. They're going to have some legal liability for it because the dangers are just, they're amazing, they're shocking, they're astounding. What well, but they tell people every day, take your antioxidants on TV. Every day I see it. Antioxidants. That's all you see. Yep. Well, now, some antioxidants may be okay. But the problem is, is that we're loading up on them. How do we do that? It, they're fortified in so many foods now. They're in energy drinks. They're in cereals. They're in all of the flour products as preservatives. So they're all over the place, and they're even genetic engineers now, these smart guys in the lab, trying to figure out ways 
to make certain foods like tomatoes or even strawberries for our area that have increased levels of antioxidants. And the problem is, is that we're getting to the state where we're taking an overdose of antioxidants. We call it hypervitaminosis. We're becoming chemically imbalanced. That's a very good point. I, I like to think of it of antioxidants and oxidants in the body it should be like two voices singing in the choir of life, and they must be in harmony. If you're not singing in harmony, you get noise. Balanced. That's must right. have balance. Very in good, the universe, my friend. In our bodies, in our minds, in our mouth, in our food, in everything. Balance. <laughs> I am so much with you, my friend. See, we need ways based on these oxygen products, and I think this is the possibility that we can effectively efficiently and safely treat such things as cancer and heart disease. Yeah, we don't need cancer. Can we don't we? need heart disease. We should be healthy. i got to go to the bathroom. Take a break. All right, my friend. Hey, Doc. Doc. Yes, my friend. Let me ask you something. i got a friend of mine had cancer, and he went somewhere, and they gave him radiation. Now, I thought radiation kills people. Well, radiation is a very serious situation, as you know. Radiation can kill people. Look at the people who were exposed to the bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Well, if you're already sick, how does radiation not make you more sick? Well, you try to use it to just kill the cancer. You try to use ports and focus it, if you can, on just the cancer. Just the cancer. But unfortunately, there's a lot of other things in the path of the radiation. So we need a way to get around that. And there's also the problems with chemotherapy. Now, it's the best we have for the time being. But as you know, we, we give patients what we call a maximally tolerated dose. Maximum tolerated dose. That means if they take any more, they're going to what? That's Die. right. That's right. It's a maximum tolerated dose. You can't give any more. So the idea well, is that's that. That's great. Yeah, the idea is that, you know, you can. You can OD use on radiation. Yeah, that, that won't kill the patient, but will, will kill the cancer. And it, we don't have that kind of selectivity now with our treatment. And this is why a lot of the things that I'm working on is to allow us to have that selectivity where we can just kill the cancer cells and not harm normal cells. Well, the body would kill the cells if you let it, huh? Well, there have been over a thousand cases of, of something called spontaneous regression of cancer in which the cancer will go away by itself. And the body must make it go away. Well, that's right. That's, that, is a, that is so important to me as a scientist and as a, as a doctor that the body has the capability to get rid of cancer. We just have to figure out how it did it and try to mimic it. And I think that's what a lot of my work is based on. That's what we're trying to do. And oxygen helps get rid of the cancer, I think. That's right. And its products. Once you start to change its, its chemical structure, then it becomes very effective on killing cancer, on killing bacteria, on killing all sorts of the pathogens that try to attack us. That's why they use an oxygen soap. I saw a soap on TV oxidize and you oxidize and you kill germs. Well, that's so true. That's right. If you want to, you know, clean something like if you in a laboratory and you spill some uh, HIV AIDS, you know, viruses on on a tabletop, you clean it with Clorox or with bleach or with Clorox uh, is chlorine and oxygen. Oh, yeah, and it's a great oxidizer, as you know. Yeah. It, or, or you could clean it with hydrogen peroxide. You want to oxidize it because it has a fatty coat on the virus. Is that the what virus. they put in pools? That's right. That's what keeps the pool clean, keeps the pool right? Clean. That's right. Keeps all the funky out of the pool. That's exactly right, my friend. And so that's our little lesson today. And, and uh, again, our goal is to get to the people the message that these antioxidants may be a waste of your money and they may well be endangering your health and that of your loved ones. Antioxidants. Thank you very much, Payne Freeman. Thank you, sir. <laughs> See, all 